we'll go through this fairly quickly if you want to bring up the first one. Um, this is uh, Syringa vulgaris hybrid. Uh, this is offered by Greenwood Daylily. That's that's our president, John Schuster. That's his um, his uh, nursery, and the for the white one in down in the corner is Snowy Beach Party, which has been around for a little while, so that you can actually see some established specimens in gardens. I've planted one for a client. She adores it. It's outside of her front porch and she goes out all the time when it's in full bloom. And I'm now excited that there is Rosy Beach Party, which is the one on the upper, uh, the upper quadrant there. And um, John actually brought some of these to the um, SCHS uh, um, yard sale that we had back at the start of April at Baker's Acres and they went very quickly. Um, these are low chill varieties, and uh, as you can see by the snowy beach party, even down at the beach, they will actually give you flowers. So um, you do want to, at least I've found better luck citing them, particularly inland in partial shade. They like morning sun or late afternoon sun, but that hot mid-afternoon sun will sometimes scorch them and it will also make the flowers, uh, you'll, they'll, they'll, kind of rush through their flowering cycles. So you want to give them a, just a little bit of shade. And this is from Joan Citron's garden, which is magnificent, by the way. Um, next slide. This is also from Joan's garden. And this is a, a fairly familiar site around town. It's Aeonium Schwarzkopf, um, which is that dark, almost blackish maroon uh, Aeonium. And this is in full bloom. So when the aeoniums are all fairly easy to grow. I do find that this particular variety stretches out a little bit. It will sometimes get very tall and lanky and lose all of its lower foliage. And then when it blooms, you always know with any aeonium when it blooms, you've got work to do. Um, you're going to have to clean it up after the flowering spike dies because that whole central section is going to die. And you're either going to have to hope that it pups and start new pups or try and make cuttings of the stem. So um, anyway, the, a, a spectacular plant and spectacular in bloom also because it brings in a lot of insects uh, to those flowers. So as um, Joan points out, this is widely available. This is a, um, next one is a species tulip. I didn't have time to actually scroll through and try and find out which one this is. There are a number of um, low chill tulips from around the Mediterranean and into the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, particularly in Turkey and places like that, that will get by with low chill here in, in California, the lady tulips and candlestick tulips. Some of them last a few years. Some of them will actually multiply and last for many years. There's, there's a pink and yellow. Most of them are like this, though. They're quite small. And they open to a, a star-like flower rather than the familiar tul cup tulip that we know. But then they, when they close up late in the day, they actually display usually a, a darker color on the, the bands on the back of the, the petals. So it, they're really quite... Um, quite pretty and uh, worth planting in full sun and give them good drainage and um, they'll come up year after year. So uh, give these a try. I will try and identify this if I can. By the time I, I, I uh, type this stuff up, I'll try and find out which one this is. Next. Uh, this is Morea uh, species. They call it uh, the peacock flower. And so for anyone who's been gardening for a long time, you'll know that Morea used to refer to what is now called Dietes, the, the fortnight lilies. This is the true Morea. This is a bulb. Uh, they do go completely dormant in summer. They're summer dry. And this can become invasive. Um, it, it seeds itself very vigorously at the, at, on well-drained soils. This thing will become invasive. I've seen it spread through gardens, I think they're still trying to get rid of it at the Huntington. I'm not. I'm not sure, but it is. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Everyone wants it until they have it, and then they don't want it. Although, if you clip the seed pods before they open, um, you'll go a long way towards keeping it in check. It's not that difficult to to keep in check. You just have to keep an eye on it. So, uh, like many South African bulbs, it will come up with the first rains and blooms 
usually late winter or early spring. Um, very, very handsome. Many, many different varieties. This is a species. It's probably one of the more common ones. Um, again, I'll try and ID this if I can. Um, I'll pull out the books and uh, when I go to type this up. Next slide, please. This is um, Dicolostema capitatum, and it's now, I didn't know this, it's now Dipterostemon. So they've changed another name on us yet again. So this is uh, Blue Dicks uh, from, from uh, California. It's a California native. Uh, there's many types of Dicolostemas. There's uh, different colors. There's white to blue to purple. And there's even some bright red ones that have green on them, uh, different species. Um, fairly easy to grow in, um, in open areas, uh, sometimes in bright shade or full sun. Um, they're, they're quite easy to grow and uh, can actually colonize in areas. So very pretty. Um, next slide. Uh, this is from my own garden at Cianothus El Dorado. It's a variegated California lilac. And I did actually finally find this. I said it's a hybrid of a native Cianothus. It's actually, it's a selection off of another selection of uh, Cianothus thersiflorus, which is the same um, uh, species that is gives us uh, Yankee Point, except this is a much larger shrub. And you can see the new growth as opposed to the old growth there. The old growth has the yellow variegation that's up at the top left corner and down towards the right. The brighter green variegation is all the new growth that's on that. And this is a balancing act in my garden. It's in partial shade, but it's in the shade of a Chinese elm. And I had <laughs> in years where I forget to clip back the elm, this doesn't do so well. In years that I remember to clip back the elm so that it gets some decent sun, it does fairly well, but it won't take the strong afternoon sun in my garden. It'll actually burn. Uh, very easy native plant to grow. Just don't overwater them. Uh, next one. Um, a porocactus uh, flagelliformis used to be disco cactus flagelliformis, and they actually did move it into, they, they made it its own um, uh, genus, I think. The, all of these are there uh, in the Hilo series group of cactus, um, or and most of them grow like this. They they either climb and cling or they drape, and they're uh, epiphytic or semi-epiphytic cactuses. They'll grow in the notches of trees and things like that, where they can find leaf litter to root into, um, and. Uh, Yvonne says that hers is hanging from an oak tree. It gets filtered morning sun. And this is repotted five years ago. And it's six feet long and touching the ground and watered. I think she said it's twice a month. So um, uh, most of the, the ep epiphytic cactuses are starting to bloom right now. They're, they're all, all of the, the um, epicactus and high-low series and things are coming into flower. So, it's a really wonderful time to have these. This looks, I need, to, I want to talk to Yvonne about this, about how you go about repotting something like that, because it looks well armed. So, um, and is the, the, yes, that is the last slide. So please, if you have uh, things in your garden, even if you think it's something common, don't hesitate to, to show us. If you're proud of it, send a picture in, send in the information, you know, as much as you can give us. And uh, we'll try and fit it into the plant forum during one of our meetings. Or if you, when we do start back into our in-person meetings, please bring your plants in with you. And 